till now we have been playing with data and we have been preparing the data for doing our predictive modeling and now is the time when we'll go out and build our first simple predictive model so in this module we'll cover how to build your first few predictive models in order to solve business problems now before we do that let's just do a quick recap of what all have we looked at till now so we looked at how do you start by defining problems so how do you take ambiguous business problems and convert them into data problems and then define them specifically in terms of what data problem are you trying to solve once you've done that you go ahead and build hypothesis so this is where you do brainstorming with your business stakeholders you reach out to various people who might have some experience in solving that problem and you create all of that intelligence to create a list of hypotheses once you have these hypotheses you go out and extract the data necessary to either prove or disprove these hypotheses in order to do that you might need to do exploration and transformation which we looked at in the last module now that you have this data ready we are ready to look at building our first set of predictive models and interestingly one thing which i've learned over years is you don't need a lot of data science knowledge to build simple predictive models you can start by doing simple things which can go a long way in helping you build a more robust predictive model later on in the journey let me explain what i mean by that right so we will start by a simple or a very basic model and the idea is that this model gives us the first estimate of our problem so what score would be a good score or what would be the right accuracy so first basic models can give us this estimate in a very quick manner these base case models also give us a good estimate of what would be the business logics to solve some of these problems so for example let's say you want to create a agent segmentation so these base case models would be something as simple as creating averages at a segment level which is what the business would anyway be doing at their own end so if you talk to a sales manager they would have some kind of agent segmentation in their mind and it would be using something like a average of business they would have seen in past so what these base case models do is that they give you a good estimate of what is the basic score you should expect from your models and your predictive models which are much more granular than this must do better than this so how do we make our first base model so in order to do that you need to start by creating the data set so we'll prepare the data set in the format which is ready for putting it into predictive models we'll then use several methods which we'll cover later in this module to generate predictions once we have these methods we'll actually go out and generate predictions and finally we will evaluate how good or bad our models are right so with that let's start with the first step which is actually creating the data set for predictive model so let's assume that your entire data which is available is represented by these boxes and you have identified which are your dependent variables in this case represented by y and which are your independent variables which are represented by x so what you are essentially trying to do through this predictive model is find the mapping which takes x as the input and gives you y as the output and you want to do this for all your future use cases or for your future examples or future data where you would get x but you would want to predict y right so for example you have all the past data of your defaults in case of a bank and you want to use that to create relationship so that you can say that whenever a person hasn't paid you for more than a particular time and the amount is higher than a particular amount the chances of the person going default are very high so you are essentially looking at those relationships between x and y so that you can do the mapping but the challenge is how do we create a predictive model on this and in order to do that what we do is we divide the data set into two parts 
the first part is called a training data set and the second part is called a testing data set now why do we do that we do this in order to make sure that our model is robust and it does not overfit the data so let me explain that a bit so what we do is we divide the data into two parts the train data is used to actually build the model and then we use the model which we have built on the train data to see whether we are getting the predictions on the test data in the right manner or not we need to do this because we do not have any other data to test this model explicitly on right so for example if i use the entire data to build my model i will not be able to see whether i am able to predict my future values in the right manner so if i represent that by x dash i will not be able to see whether i predict x dash in the right manner or not so what i do is i go back to my current data set and i either divide it randomly or in case of time dependent variables what i do is i move the current day to one of the days in past and i assume that the data in between the hypothetical current day and the current day is actually my future data so now i'll train my data on x and y and i'll test it on x dash so this is my training data and this is my test data right so that is how you divide the data so that you can use this to train your model so we had created a data set and divided it in two parts which was training data and test data which was separated by a particular day and the idea was that we can train the model on train data and test it by doing predictions on the test data now before we move forward i wanted to call out that the modeling process is actually iterative in nature so you never go out and build your perfect model in the first shot instead what you do is build a model and then continuously improve on it so let me bring that out in the way the modeling cycle actually looks so as discussed already you would have a list of hypotheses which you would have created which helps you in creating the data set for any problem now once you have the data set and you've divided it in test and train that is when you do your model build and once you've done your model build you need to evaluate how good or bad is your model and there are various ways of evaluating which we'll touch in the later part of this course but once you've evaluated you can always go back and improve your model and that improvement can come from better set of hypotheses or by using better modeling techniques so the first set of models for example which we are discussing are all basic models but then you can continuously improve your models by doing better modeling and better hypothesis generation right so keep that in mind while we walk you through these benchmark models so these are just the first step of the modeling process now as you would know any supervised machine learning problem can be classified into two types of problem it could be a regression problem where you are predicting something continuous so for example sales in a supermarket store or it could be a classification problem so you have to divide the outcome into several classes so for example whether a passenger survived titanic tragedy or not so there are only two classes so we'll take each of these types of problems and then understand how to create benchmark models so let's start with regression models and the problem which we'll use for this is big mart sales so what you need to do as part of this problem is you need to build a predictive model to predict the sales of each product at a particular store so for example i am selling butter at a particular store so we need to predict it at a store and product level and here are the set of data which we have so there are several data points for the item and for the store so we have things like uh, item weight fat fat content visibility which relate to item and then about the store like what is the size of the store what is the location and what we need to do is predict the sales on a particular outlet for each of the products and we can use these variables as our independent variable now if you have to do this what do you think can be the simplest strategy 
to perform this prediction and as you might have guessed you can simply use mean at a product level so if i just say that uh, what was the butter which i've sold at a particular store month on month that is my prediction that is a good starting point but the problem is that it is very simplistic we can further improve this by bringing in other variables into account so i can say what was the mean of products which had high fat content or low fat content or high weight or low weight and i can continue to improve this by bringing in more and more variables but i am just taking means across these segments of the products which i have in my data set and this becomes my benchmark model now once you've built this model how do you evaluate it and the simplest way to evaluate any model is again mean absolute error which is the sum of absolute differences between the observation and the prediction divided by the total number of observations so what you predicted and what it actually was the difference of the two and when you take absolute value of it and sum it across all the data points divided by the total number of observations that is your mean absolute error so for example let's say if we predicted the mean for all these data points so the prediction is represented by the red line whereas the actual values are the blue points so the difference between the blue point and the red line vertically is the difference or the error get through my predictions the better is my model and we can use this evaluation to see how my models are performing versus some of the other models which i might have and now we would look at the same thing for a classification problem so how do you create some benchmark models for a classification problem where you have to classify the outcomes into several classes right so let the problem statement which we'll take for this purpose is the titanic survival prediction so we have to predict whether a particular customer would survive a titanic tragedy or not right so as you can expect the outcome for this problem would be survival 0 or 1 so 0 stands for no survival and 1 stands for survival and we have various variables like sex or age or the cabin number and the ticket details of various passengers and we need to pred predict whether a particular customer survived or not so this is a classification problem and now if you go back to the same principles we obviously cannot use mean to predict classification because mean will come out in decimals so what can you do to create a simple benchmark model and if you think about it the right answer is mode of survival right so at a overall level if say 70% of customers survive or they have a value one the best prediction i can make basis only this information is that every passenger survive but the minute i can introduce variables i can then continue to improve this model so i can use gender based mode of survival and when you do that which we'll be doing in the next few videos you'll see that female passengers are more likely to survive as opposed to male passengers you can again add more combinations based on which cabin the people came from which port did they embark on so on and so forth but the idea is that we can use mode instead of mean in classification problems now once you have done the prediction how do you evaluate the model so in this particular case we can use something very simple which is the accuracy of prediction so in how many predictions i was able to predict the class correctly so out of all the predictions i have made what percentage were correct class predictions so let's say if these were the data points for which i made the predictions and the actuals are represented in this column and the predicted values are on the next column if i have to build a evaluation metric i can just say whether my prediction was correct or incorrect so if the actual survived was 1 and predicted was 1 the evaluation is that this is a correct prediction whereas if it was one actually and i predicted zero it would be classified as incorrect prediction and if i just take correct predictions divided by all the predictions it will come out to be 
the accuracy of the prediction and in this case because this is a completely random problem you will see that there are four correct and four incorrect so i am getting 50 percent accurate results from this particular prediction set so again we have the framework ready so we can build models by using simple mode by segment so we can use it using gender using uh, the port and other variables and then we can use the evaluation metric to see how good or bad is our model we'll create a benchmark solution for a classification problem which is the titanic survival problem so let's start by importing the standard libraries which is pandas numpy and sklearn and the data set so again the data set is available in my same folder and it's named train.csv so i'll change the name as train.csv and i'll run the shape command so i have 891 rows and 12 columns and let me just look at the data to make sure that this is the right data so there is passenger id survived 01 which is the outcome and then passenger class name so this looks like the right data and let me quickly look at the missing values so there are 177 missing values on age 687 missing values on cabin so as you can see cabin has 687 missing values out of 891 so not sure how much value that will add so let's start by shuffling and you know creating the train and the test data set again i'm using the same methodology so i'll divide the entire thing by into four parts and then use three of these parts for train data set and one part for test data set so we had done this before and one of the question you might have is why am i using random state equal to 42 so you can use any random state but the idea is to use consistent random state so that you can replicate the same thing again so make sure that you keep a random state there don't leave that optional field alone because otherwise it will become a random outcome so this is done to reproduce the result so i get two data frames so train has 621 rows now and test is 271 let's quickly also look at them so that they look fine and both of them look fine to me no overlapping values at least not in the head okay so let's start by putting simple mode as our prediction so what i'll do is create a column simple mode is equal to train and just take the mode of the survived column and let's look at the head so what it says is that the mode was zero for all the people so most of the people actually ended up dying so that would be my base prediction and that gives me 63 percent accuracy in this particular model now let's move to a gender based mode so as you can see the mode for females is going to be one because 167 out of 200 and 10 plus females actually survived whereas in case of males only only 76 males survived and 321 of them died so the mode for females would be one mode for males would be zero so i again go and make those changes and i look at what is my accuracy after this and my accuracy of the model reaches to 78.9 percent so it jumped from 63 percent which was by just using overall mode to 78.9 percent by just using gender as a segmentation variable now you can go ahead and do this on several other variables and create more nuanced models so the next one you can probably try is the passenger class and see if that class is making a difference so go ahead and do that and that should give you a good idea of how to create benchmark models and evaluate them thank you